Welcome to another episode of the CPG Guys podcast. Our co-hosts, Sri Rajagopalan and Peter V.S. Bond, explore how brands and retailers engage with consumers online, in-store, and everywhere in between. And now, here are Sri and Peter. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to the CPG Guys podcast. I'm PVSB, the Insight CPG Guy. My domains of expertise revolve around digital shelf content, retail, customer data, insight, CRM, and loyalty. And my co-host, he's the action CPG guy. He's an expert at branding, direct-to-consumer, unified commerce, retail media, and marketplaces. So please join me today in welcoming the man with the golden voice, Shri. Shri, how are you doing today? Doing awesome, Peter. And are you softening up, Peter? You've been exceptionally kind to me in our recordings this week. Well, you know, and- man with a golden voice, it's kind of that James Bondish. You know, you're always calling me Mr. Bond. I figured I'd, I'd make you the villain. Um, I oh, feel you'd say the man with the radio face. But you know. uh, yes, my wife does say my face was was natively made for radio. So podcasting, it really is a great extension. So in any event, uh, before we get to our guest today, Shri, I want to remind our audience that all of our content, including our tremendous series on profitability, one of the most asked for series that we ever created, uh, our Women's Leadership Series, you know, we were able to give what, about $8,000 to Susan G. Komen as a result of that, and our ongoing Founder Series from Q1 of, the, of this year that we continue to have founders on on, an, on a frequent basis. You can get that. Go to cpgguys.com and Shri, what do we charge on our site? What's the what's the cost? Is it absolutely free? It's free. It's free. Who doesn't like free? All right. And I also want to remind you that our our content on this podcast is audience driven. So the way you tell us who you want us to have on and what you want to talk about, just go to ratethispodcast.com slash cpg guys. Leave us a review. While you're there, they have this five-star scheme. It's five stars of ratings. Give us a rating. I know I like, I'm in the rating and review business. I like five, but it's up to you. Choose whatever you want. But seriously, we want your review because we want to know where to take this podcast. So um, Shri and I, you know, Shri, we've discussed this in quite a number of episodes that with the explosion of digital commerce as a result of the pandemic, it makes it more and more challenging to measure the omni-channel universe, right? The retail landscape fundamentally and radically changed because COVID upended the supply chain, traditional shopping behaviors and whatnot. So there's not a single category brand or merchant that's been unaffected by this shift in shopping dynamics we've seen unfold, right? So the problem is the shifts in shopping behavior changing market conditions and inaccurate measurements are some of the challenges that we know our listeners, particularly in the brand and retail space face really every day. Sure, some measure of uncertainty is unavoidable, right? After all, customer behavior can be unpredictable, but the true ability to understand omni-shopper behavior across the retail landscape and to identify, dissect, and allocate retail sales across different transaction types continues to be a significant challenge for most of the industry. So that is why Shri and I, the CPG guys, have decided to partner with Nielsen IQ to have a very open conversation on the billion-dollar opportunity of Omni. Joining us today in the first of two episodes, working with Nielsen IQ, we have Liz Buchanan, Head of Consumer Intelligence for North America, and Natalie Williams, VP of Product Leadership, both at Nielsen IQ. They're here to share a little bit more about how Nielsen IQ is helping brands stay ahead with accurate marketplace measurement through their Omni Sales and Omni Shopper solutions. So with that, Liz, Natalie, greetings. Welcome to the podcast. We're so happy to have you here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having us. Super excited to be here. Yes, agree. We're Delighted to be joining you. Thank you. Thank you. We can't wait to get into this because this is something Shri and I talk about very frequently. How do you get a handle on measurement with all of this transition? And we're glad you're here. 
to help us walk through Nielsen's approach to it, because I think it's pretty innovative and it's pretty sound. So to that end, uh, before we get into that, you know, Liz, our audience loves to multitask. They love to investigate while they listen to the podcast. You know, they're multitasking. I know I'm doing, I've got like, I got my iPhone, I got my iPad, everything's right here while I'm listening. And so can you, first of all, tell us where people can learn more about the the solutions you're going to talk about today, and then give us a little bit about Nielsen IQ and what you're doing there. Yeah, absolutely. So first, our website is probably a good place to start, nielseniq.com. And there's a section on the site specific to OmniShopper. So you can go to nielseniq.com backslash OmniShopper if you want to check that out while we're talking today. Um, a little bit about Nielsen IQ. It's a it's a new brand for us. We are our own newly independent organization as of this year, 2021. You know, our legacy dates back to 1923 when Art Nielsen first founded the Nielsen Company, and he started, you know, measuring food and drug indices. Uh, it's kind of the original retail measurement as early as the 1930s, and by 1935, he had actually invented the concept of market share. So not a lot of people know the history of Nielsen. And and I think the television ratings for many years sort of overshadowed um, as a public brand with a lot of brand recognition, the broader sort of Nielsen entity and what is now Nielsen IQ was actually the original part of Nielsen. So super excited to be continuing on this journey and uh, leading market measurement globally. We're in over a hundred countries. Um, we continue to invest in measurement in all of those markets, traditional trade, uh, modern trade, developing markets, developed markets. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that today. But our objective is to cover commerce, where it's happening, and to cover consumers. And today, um, you know, we believe we, we cover about 90% of the world's population and what we measure and are excited to continue to evolve that in this new landscape. Liz, that's a terrific introduction. Thank you for that. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the digital liner notes of this podcast. The link that you mentioned will also have links to both of you on LinkedIn so that people know who you are. They can can learn about your backgrounds and understand your subject matter expertise. So this is terrific. Uh, So why don't we get right to the questions? I know Shri and I've got a bunch lined up, so we're going to rattle these off. And hopefully at the end of this, the audience is going to have a much better understanding of how you're bringing some organization, structure, and thought to this whole Omni measurement aspect. So as I mentioned to you over the past year, Omni has graduated from just being kind of a boardroom buzzword, oh, we're we're Omni-channel, to actually being a strategic catalyst for growth and a business imperative, right, because of the massive shift in shopping behavior as a result of this pandemic. So to that end, how is Nielsen IQ supporting the industry wide in terms of this Omni evolution? You know, can't be understated or overstated rather um, the the change that that the last year uh, you know impacted the business and and in particular for food companies and we you know we work with a, a number of of CPG categories but food companies I think in particular thought they had some time before Omni was really going to take hold in a in a big big way and we saw in 2020 that food actually became the largest online category, um, really driven by the the change in shopper behavior due to the pandemic. And so there's no longer an opportunity to wait. It's here. And um, our objective is to, and I'll use this kind of maybe cheeky word, but omnify our business at this stage. And we've been making major changes um, to doing that. You know, e-commerce is developing very differently around the world. And so we're taking approaches to capture that e-commerce activity and, and subsequently measure Omnicommerce that best align to those local retail environments. I know Natalie will talk a bit more about how we're doing that market by market, Um, but this includes the way that we measure sales. So helping to ensure that our retail and our CPG and our financial services clients all have the most complete understanding of online, offline, and sort of blind spot uh, measurement, but ultimately also how we help them activate. And so that includes a number of our shopper and our um, consumer services as well, and making sure that those are fully representative of the, the consumer's omni journey. Thank you so much. Welcome to both of you for this on the show. 
it's a pleasure to have you both and actually chat. Phenomenal growth of Ecom. And that's what my next question is, and it's for you, Nelly. Obviously, in the last 12 months, we've seen an explosion of this thing called omnichannel, as Peter said, no longer a boardroom buzzword. But I got to imagine in your massive network of partners, when, it, when we look at your retail partners, how has this rapid actual e-commerce expansion challenged visibility for your retail partners? Sure. Uh, I think the, the largest contributing factor has really been the proliferation of places to buy and methods to buy uh, from a consumer perspective. So that um, change and, and to bring it to life, there's both like a whole new competitive set out there of thousands of digital merchants. And that ranges from physical brick and mortars who've stood up a, a digital storefront to direct to consumer players, to marketplaces, to even you know like handmade goods that, uh, that never before were commonplace or considered a competitive set for our retailers. So what's, what we've seen as being kind of their most um, sought after question to answer is, you know, where, how do I stand versus my competitive set? And to enable the, the answer to that question is what is my competitive set? Uh, because I think the whole definition of a retailer has also changed you know, with, with, with the emergence of direct to consumer brands and marketplaces. Um, plus social commerce. So like the ways in which a consumer can transact and the types of products that are available, available to them today is vastly different from the traditional brick and mortar landscape, which is very you know, tangible and, and visible uh, to a retailer. So we've been um, investing in solutions to, to bring those former blind spots to life. That's great. Thank you for that, Natalie. So I think I'll throw this out to both of you and y'all can answer it how you see fit, but I want to kind of get in, now we're going to get into the sausage making, right? Because that's what we do here on the podcast. We like to educate, not just the 30,000 foot, here's what's shiny. We want to get under the hood. We want to see how the engine runs. So you recently released details around a new, what I think is kind of impressive suite of solutions around Omni. And the first offering you debuted last week called Omni Shopper. So can you walk our audience through how the data is actually captured at the shopper level and how this translates into, which is not just a measurement solution, but a meaningful measurement solution? Like how granular can brands get at the product and geography level in understanding behavior? Sure. Um, I'll kick us off as the, the resident sausage maker <laughs> of the two. <laughs> Um, so it starts by having a kind of vast network of consumers um, and a new age methodology of collecting their transactions. And we do that through a mobile application where consumers are able to provide us their receipts, both physical and digital receipts and order uh, history for certain e-merchants um, that we then harvest to represent their total you know, buying behavior across that vast um, kind of ever-growing network of physical and digital e-com outlets. Um, we then kind of select the, the sample of that population that is representative of, of the US from a geographical and demographic perspective. Um, we take those receipts, which if you have a look at a recent receipt that you've, you've made um, from a physical store, a lot of the descriptions are pretty challenging uh, to unlock. Hieroglyphics, I think, is the term I usually <laughs> um, use. And retailers in the U.S., you know, there's hundreds of brick and mortar uh, retailers and then kind of banners underneath that even at the local level can customize and put their own spin on a, a receipt description. And so that is a massive challenge uh, for a methodology like this. And, and we've really unlocked that through a couple of techniques, but most importantly, our vast um, set of retailer point of sale data that we've had in market for, for years. Um, so we receive transaction data from about 85% of um, total sales in the US from a, a scope of merchants and are able to un unlock and decode a lot of those uh, cryptic receipt descriptions, uh, being able to link them uh, to actual UPCs or kind of a close SKU, SKU level detail. Um, and for digital receipts, you know, there's a wealth of rich um, product detail out on the web. And so we leverage 
um, the rich descriptions that come through on the receipts themselves, the order page, order history pages, and the product detail page um, to, to decompose and, and attribute those, those items at a you know, very granular level, flavor, size, packaging type. Um, so we take all of that consumer receipt data, break it down in, into those meaningful kind of product attributes and then extrapolate that sample to represent uh, the total US population of individuals. And that's a big change for the industry as well that has been accustomed to using household-based um, consumer data. In the world of Omni, our objective is to measure 100% of transactions. And we do that by tying it back to the individual, which unlocks digital purchases, which are made at the individual email you know, level or order account level as well as impulse out of home type purchases where you may you know, go to a convenience store and buy a, a soda and drink it right away or go out to eat. Um, a lot of those purchases are more individual in nature. So this methodology helps us unlock a lot of kind of formerly un, unknown uh, trips and, and purchase types in our overall data. Thank you so much for decomposing the source of projections too in the process. We really <laughs> appreciate that. For our listeners, if you paid attention, Question three was a treasure trove of the logic behind how projections are done. And that's what I heard, Natalie. Thank you so much. Liz, so, how about the value aspect? Yeah, I think, and I, I know you asked sort of what is the, what is the level of detail that you're going to be able to kind of glean you know, out of this solution? And, and Natalie certainly spoke to why it is so challenging to build this type of solution given um, the not only the fragmentation in the marketplace, but then obviously for the dot com, there are a lot of disruptors that that happen at any given moment. So you know, today your your page looks one way, and tomorrow it looks very different, and that creates kind of a, a need to make sure that you we have future proof technology and and methodologies that are able to manage those changes as they happen. Um, to ensure that we've got the, the best possible data. But, but ultimately our objective is to measure um, as granular as possible. And, and we expect to have the most granular measurement um, from a, an Omni shopper solution in the industry, being able to get to the majority of retail coverage actually at the item level. Um, as well as then from a from a kind of market dimension or you know channel coverage um, perspective, we're we're doing this essentially from a store or a, a merchant and then aggregating up. So you've got that very granular um, detail on on both ends of the spectrum, both in terms of what you can see from a retailer perspective and then what you can see from a product perspective. The big unlock here is that you know for the first time, and, and Natalie sort of alluded to this, we're capturing a much broader um, coverage of trips. So we're getting five times more online purchases than you know, we were with previous methodologies, which lets you understand those dot-com trips in, a, in far greater detail, understand fulfillment types, understand who are the shoppers on, on those uh, dot-com trips. We are getting um, you know, two times overall more trips per month at least. You know, in terms of in terms of coverage, so this is a big unlock in a number of those then end use cases, where you want to be able to see, for example, um, less less sort of traditional trip types. It could be specialty retail purchases. It could be smaller impulse trips, immediate consumption, convenience. We're capturing things like meal kits and and food delivery services like Uber Eats and DTC specifics like Dollar Shave and Harry's.com and Chewy.com and that those have been big, big, big outages to date, um, you know, in, in terms of what you're able to really get that total consumer uh, understanding um, against. And so we're, we're really excited about being able to bring the solution to market. It's here and, uh, and be able to begin to unlock that for clients. Yeah, I can just build on that quickly with an example. Um, so as you mentioned, we just launched uh, the first you know, view into this new data set um, about a week and a half ago now. And um, you know, a really interesting category over the past year has been health and beauty care with you know, the population not um, being out and about as, as often. And a lot of uh, what you would have otherwise discovered through trial you know, in person uh, shifted online. And so 
a big question, you know, some of our clients had was, well, what has the Amazon effect been in health and beauty care? Where are sales shifting to Amazon and where is Amazon losing to? And in the uh, health and beauty care category, Amazon's actually shifted more, most share from the drug stores, which you know he probably would have would thought could be the case or department stores. But um, through our data, we've isolated that the majority of gains Amazon's um, made have come from drug stores. And the biggest area where they um, have lost sales or sales have shifted to is um, Ulta and Ulta.com. So that's you know a really meaningful insight if you're Amazon or a drug retailer or Ulta to know you know where your consumers are coming from or are moving to um, from a from a shifting behavior perspective. You know, for our audience, when we talk to service providers, the best discussions are one where you can take and explain the science, and you can connect the science to outcomes or use cases. And guess what Natalie and Liz just did for question three? Exactly that. And so we're going to attempt that now with a slightly different hat for question four. You know, if I were my, the commercial sales hat that I've represented for brands last couple of decades, and I believe you now have recently announced a solution called OmniSales, the question of the day that I would have every single Monday, every single day is, what's my sales? What's my share? What's my category performance? So I believe OmniSales actually helps brands track product brand category sales across omni-channel retailers and delivery channels. Could you do the same thing for us, which is break this specific solution down in terms of the data sourcing and the transformation you're bringing in terms of the outcomes or the value of the use cases for brand and retail application? Yes, so OmniSales is our evolution of that kind of first ever Nielsen product, which is, you know, what's my market share? What are my sales? And what it's doing is kind of dramatically expanding that uh, footprint of coverage. So ensuring we're representing, you know, 100% of the category sales um, in that market share number. So think of that as your denominator um, in a market share calculation. And we do that by combining our kind of rich wealth of point of sale data that's received you know, directly from retailers that, that are in the cooperative model and share their data with us as well as leveraging consumer source data to fill in the blind spots from a sales and share perspective. Um, so that's bringing in views of specialty retail, of e-com players, of direct to consumer brands, delivery services like Instacart. So I would say the two biggest use cases it unlocks is visibility to that full ecosystem of you know, the players in a category and the absolute size of the category as well as the kind of points of attribution of what are driving sales within the category from a traditionally channel perspective. So is it, a, is it the drug channel, is it the master channel, is it .com? But also more nuanced within the digital world to say, like, are they subscription sales? Are they first party versus third party? Is it a click and collect or a ship to home type order? So like, what are the, what are the different touch points from a consumer perspective that are driving my share up or down or my competitive? Um, landscape up or down. So I think those are the two biggest unlocks uh, with this new product. Yeah, to, I, well, I'll build on that, I guess. You know, we saw a number of brands grow online in 2020 and, and continuing into 2021. Um, and that's great. I mean, they, you know, most of, many of them saw double digit growth, but when you actually take a step back and look at whether or not they grew at you know a rate comparable or exceeding the category and if you think about category as truly representative of their competitive set um many of them did not grow share and in fact the majority did not grow share and i am certain that many of them do not know that <laughs> because they're not really looking at the end-to-end -end omni landscape in terms of inclusions on that omni continuum, you know, building up kind of the points of coverage, as Natalie mentioned. But then also, there's a second part to this conversation, which is how do you define who your competitors are and what? And, and as we know, you know, based on many, many years of working in this industry, that a lot of times those definitions for purposes of market share reporting are, are fairly custom or cherry picked. And so there's an opportunity, I think, at this moment, it's a bit of an inflection point for us to actually take a step back. And we're going to be doing that with the OmniSales product to say, who are your true competitors? How do you really need to be managing this business 
to ensure that you have full visibility? And then how does that flow through into your internal business processes in a logical way? Um, because we know that there, you know, that, that that's going to be a, a disruptor, but it's an important one. It's a reset a bit uh, in terms of where the, the overall industry is. All right. So we heard about Omni Shopper. We heard about Omni Sales. We also heard a new term, Omnify. The CPG <laughs> guys are nothing if not on point. We are going to, Shri, we're going to add hashtag Omnify to our posting on LinkedIn and everywhere else. I don't know if you knew we're on TikTok. I'm we're also on Clubhouse, but I haven't figured out how to put a hashtag on that. But in any event, that's, a, that's an entirely other story. But Liz, so now that we know about this suite of solutions, give us a very concise summary of how this is going to help brands win. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's um, a couple of things. So it helps prioritize where to play. And I think if you're less mature in e-com at this stage, the most important thing you need to do is prioritize where to play and understanding the size of the market, the, the true size of retail players, the true competitive landscape is key to informing this. It has to truly represent omni-sales measurement. Brands who are more mature have likely decided sort of where to play already. So moving on to point number two, um, and now they need to, to know sort of how to play. And retailers are working with us to ensure that their capabilities are fully omni. So, you know, think about this as taking the existing processes around category management and making sure that they're fully representative of the omni landscape. So when a brand walks in for a line review, they have that omni intelligence to inform how their SKUs compete across the various fulfillment models at that retailer, for example, or the shopper profile that they attract to the dot-com occasion or the brick and mortar aisle, you know, for basket building. So I think it's, it's around where to play and then really helping to accelerate the um, adoption of Omni into those category management processes and you know, at the trade desk at retail. We're going to now take this word Omnify and, you know, Peter and I are going to use it as a hashtag that's coming. It's going to say hashtag Omnify, hashtag Nielsen IQ. But so, so that said, let's talk a little bit about this word Omnify. It's obviously become a household word on the Omni channel, like everybody in the CPG industry is using that word for literally anything and everything, retail media, for e-commerce, for connected commerce, unified commerce, there's so many terminologies at the end of the day, it all wraps around. What's next? Like what are brands, retailers missing when it comes to Omni that they're not seeing? I think one of the biggest next steps is taking that recognition that you need to omnify your you know, ways of working and, and the way you manage your performance as an organization, but actually implementing the change is a much you know, bigger undertaking. And I think from our client's perspective, you have manufacturers and retailers that are all over the spectrum. And you know, many have been addressing the omnification need more from a supply chain perspective around data from a market measurement, the actual outcome of tracking your performance, your share, and then the tactics you would use to either grow that share, expand the category, um, it needs to go there next. And so I think the overall change management undertaking is you know, quite expansive, both from like organizational structures, central kind of ownership of the number, you know, what is my market share? I think there's a little bit of wild, wild west going on um, across the, the CPG landscape with you know, the traditional cap man and sales organization and then the e-commerce organization that, that may be standalone um, still in, in many organizations and like whose number's right? Uh, you know, what's the data that's really underpinning all of your decision-making and, and having it come together? That's like where the industry is, needs to go next. And that's definitely a, a need and a demand. There's, there's a myth, maybe it's a myth, maybe it's true, I'm going to try and find out what it is, but there's this idea that when you start talking about pivoting to consumer source data, there's this trade-off between the quality of the data you're getting for breadth of coverage, right? Do I go broad or can I go deep? So is this true uh, or is it not true? 
point of sale data is a truth set. You know, it's actual point of sale transactions and is the highest quality data source you can use to measure performance. But there's a tipping point in which it, it starts to represent less and less of your overall sales, either you know, a brand or retailers or the category such that it is misleading because you don't have that broader view. So the concept of quality is really you know, a fluid construct wherein you need to have visibility to the whole. And at this point with the size of e-commerce and the growth trajectory that that channel has, plus you know, specialty retail, you can't live without that broader view. And you know, we have many, many decades of expertise on methodologies to take known estimates and extrapolate to a full universe of data. And, and that's really why um, you can trust or clients can trust our products around market share and, and consumer measurement, even though it isn't 100% you know, sourced directly from a point of sale you know, transaction data set having that broad visibility is definitely priority number one for us, you know, providing it and should be for the, for the industry at large looking ahead. I want to remind our audience that all of our content, you can get it. It's absolutely free. Just go to cpgguys.com. And while you're there, we'd appreciate it if in particular, you'd click on the link to our LinkedIn page. And once you get there, just follow us. We post a lot of content, pretty relevant to what we do. Uh, it's all trying to educate the community on being better about e-commerce, digital commerce, unified commerce, call it what you will. But it's all available for free again. Just go to or just go to LinkedIn and enter in CPG guys and you'll find it there. Um, this is this is the first in a two part series we're going to do in partnership with Nielsen IQ. I think we learned a tremendous amount. I'm going to put a link. As I mentioned to you at the beginning of the podcast in the digital liner notes to the Omni Shop Shopper page within NielsenIQ.com. And we'll also have links to Liz and Natalie so that you can learn more about them from their LinkedIn profiles. Uh, we really wanna thank both of you for joining us today. This was extremely helpful in terms of educating the audience on how Nielsen is approaching measuring Omni because it's it's something that all brands are struggling with. Bringing order, sensibility, structure to this, it's tremendous. So Liz, Natalie, thank you so much today for joining us. Shri, I want to uh, thank you as always. This was great. I think we got some, we asked some, some detailed questions. We got some really detailed answers. This is great. That was what we like to do here on the CPG guys is the more deeper we can dig and the more thoughtful the answers are as was this episode. And I can't thank Natalie and Liz enough for actually taking time to patiently decompose the answer to our questions. Clearly Nielsen IQ's new products in this space and Omni channel are ones, you know, both brands and retailers are going to significantly benefit from. Yep, absolutely. So with that, I want to thank you all for joining us on this episode, and we look forward to you joining us on future episodes of the CPG Guys podcast. Thanks and goodbye. <music>